Hey everybody, welcome to the Apocalypse Watch, day 140 something. Um, you know, as long as it takes, however many days it takes, because it's really day by day, day by day, we live day by day. Those of us that watch this channel, we try to live as today as our last day, not worried about a rapture, not worried about the return of our Lord Jesus Christ as being eminent. We know there are many things that need to happen up until the return of our Lord. So to rush it, to will it, none of these things can 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 really be what we hope for because we have work to do. Okay? So you know again I'm watching I'm watching these people on YouTube and it's almost like it's almost like, you know, how can I say it? I mean, to distort God's word is is not acceptable. Okay, God's word is God's word. And, and when people say they're having visions and dreams and changing God's word as a result of them, this is not the truth. Okay? So you need to test these prophets you need to test these dreamers against the Word of God because nothing new will be given to us okay if anything it will be a clarification of what God has already said okay that's what we need to know it it's been told to us from the book of revelations Jude Ezekiel Isaiah um, Matthew Mark Luke Thessalonians, you know, it's all there. Daniel, it's all there for us to piece together, to have the information we need, and it will be made apparent, you know, as it unfolds. And until then, we need to we need to understand God's word and we need to to focus on the task at hand as I get sidetracked here. Um focus on the task at hand which is ensure our own salvation day by day okay we live in this world we live in a fleshly body we have thoughts ideas some of us still have actions that are contrary to the word of god and so what we need to do is is reinforce our faith our strength our our salvation through the word of god Okay, you can't reinforce salvation, but I'm what I'm saying is ensure your salvation on a day by day, case by case basis because we've seen verses that have those being saved. You know, like the the parable of the sower receiving the word of God full of joy and then the wicked one snatches them away. Where do they go? Okay? They go with the wicked ones. Okay, spring up. The water comes, the rain comes, the seed springs up, and hey, I'm a Christian, I'm born again Christian, and it dies because it isn't in the firm soil, which is the Word of God. Okay, and that's what we depend on here is the Word of God. And you know, all I can do is point out verses and, and, and give my own take, my own approach that I believe, you know, the Holy Spirit's working with us to try to discern what God's Word is saying. Okay, so, but to each, to each one has their own responsibility. Go back through the verses. Go back and pray. Go back and, and, and read and, and, and let the Spirit speak to you. Okay, so that you can ensure yourself that what you're getting is Word of God and Holy Spirit teaching. Okay, and that you're not depending on any human being. Okay, for your own understanding and your own discernment. All I can do is bring the information, okay? <laughs> and for me, it is a study. You know, this is how I study. And so I'm just sharing it with you, all right? And I'm just asking all of us in these last days, just be be clear, you know? It's okay to watch all these videos. It's definitely okay to, to see what the Word is putting out there, what the Spirit is doing and pouring out. I wouldn't be right here if it wasn't that I felt the spirit was being poured out on certain people and they were prophesying end times and it got me in line okay so I am saying as I've tested every message to scripture 
That's all I can do is try to find it in the scripture. And when they start changing things or start bringing new ideas or telling me a date or a time when other things certainly need to happen before that, you know, it just, it just, um, a cause for concern. That's all. So enough of me. Um, let's get into our father's word and and before let's pray father dear heavenly father we pray to you for the knowledge and the wisdom and the courage and the discernment necessary to study your word father with the holy spirit working with us teaching us guiding us as we pray in the name of yeshua hamashiach amen okay so today i want to go to jeremiah 23 okay and it's with the theme that i that i introduced this video with jeremiah 23 1 how terrible for the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what Yehovah Elohim, the Lord God of Israel, says about the shepherds who are shepherding my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away. You have taken care of you haven't taken care of them, and now I'm about to take care of you because of your evil deeds, declares Yehovah, declares the Lord. In Matthew 9:35-38. We see, um, then Jesus began traveling throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every illness. And when he saw the crowds, he was deeply moved with compassion for them, because they were troubled and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he told his disciples, the harvest is vast, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Okay, so by the time Jeremiah was written, it had already happened. And you can imagine thousand, however many years, hundreds of years later, when Yeshua is here, he sees the end result or the continuation of this prophecy. And, and we see that the people are scattered and they have no shepherds. And the people in the, in the synagogue and the temple of God, it's been destroyed by 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 certain men crept in unawares with lasciviousness, led by fallen angels, led by false gods who are playing God, and because their hearts and, are, and minds and, and, and souls are not convicted by the word, they go astray and start teaching contrary doctrine that has people just bewildered, okay? 23.3 I'll gather the remnant of my flock from all the countries where I've driven them and bring them back to their pasture where they'll be fruitful, increase in numbers. Okay, and the pasture is the word of God. Okay, where do you eat? Okay, where do you get your spiritual nourishment from? It's from the word of God. And your, your shepherd is to lead you to those pastures, okay? He can't come up with anything on his own. He needs to draw from, from the prophets and those that came before. Okay, who spilt their blood for this word of God, who God had spoken to in the spirit. Okay, I'll, okay the fruitful increase in numbers, 23.4. I'll raise up shepherds over them, and they'll shepherd them. My flock will no longer be afraid or terrified, and none will be missing, declares the Lord. You know... I'm not saying I'm a shepherd, but I'm saying together we're learning this word of God and together we're being shepherded by the Father and the Son, okay, and the Holy Spirit, and we are not afraid, and we are not terrified, and, and this world does not phase us, and we know anything that comes between us and this world is, is, is from Satan, having us trying to, to embrace this world and hold on to this world, okay, so, so this channel isn't for the fearful. Okay, this channel is for those who want to be fearless, those who, who want the courage to, to look at the world and say, you can't phase me, okay? Look at Satan, say, get thee behind me, Satan. It doesn't work anymore, okay? 23.5, the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I'll raise up a righteous branch for David. He will be a king who rules wisely, and he will administer justice and righteousness in the land. And this is a prophecy of Yeshua, okay? And Yeshua is from the seed of David, and he is the son of David, okay? And uh, there's a little quiz that Yeshua gave to them and we'll, we'll talk about this but this let's explain a little bit see what the Word of God says a little bit about this seed of David Matthew 20 verse 29 through 32 
As they were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed Yeshua. When two blind men who were sitting by the roadside heard that Yeshua was passing by, they shouted, Have mercy on us, Lord, son of David. They had heard, they had, see, blind people can sit and listen to the, to the Old Testament being read, okay? And so when they heard this Savior coming, Yeshua, Yah saves, coming, and he was healing, they said, have mercy on us, Lord, son of David. And when the crowd told them harshly to be silent like people do, you know, you're not worthy enough to be next to this holy man, you know what I mean? They shouted louder, Have mercy on us, Lord, son of David. And Yeshua stopped calling them, saying, What do you want me to do for you? Does he deny that he's, I'm not the son of David. He says, They're calling him the son of David. And he goes, What do you want me to do for you? I'm the son of David. Okay? While the Matthew twenty two forty one through forty six, while the Pharisees were still gathered, Yeshua asked them, "What do you think about Messiah? Whose son is he?" And they told him, "David's." And he asked them, "Then how can David, by the Spirit, call him Lord when he says, The Lord told my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet.' If David calls him Lord, how can he be his son?" And no one could answer him at all from that day on, and no one dared to ask him another question. They were perplexed, okay, but they didn't understand the virgin birth. They didn't understand that, that this was a genetic, it's genetic material, okay, that we're talking about. And Romans 1, 1 through 4, we see Paul saying, Paul, a servant of Yeshua HaMashiach, called to be an apostle and set apart for God's gospel, God's good news, God's word, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, he was a descendant of David with respect to his humanity and was declared by the resurrection from the dead to be the powerful Son of God according to the Spirit of Holiness, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord. And he was a descendant of David with respect to his humanity, his humanness, his, his, his incarnation in the flesh. And so the genetic material from David went through Mary's genome and through Mary's genome and her egg those genes were configured in a way that Adam was recreated through her womb through David's lineage. Okay? Don't get no harder than that. Jeremiah 23, 6. In his time, Judah will be delivered and Israel will dwell in safety. This is the name by which he will be known, the Lord of our righteousness. Okay, and, and see, the problem they had with Yeshua is because when the son of David would come, when Shiloh comes, when this, uh, when this uh, uh, offshoot of David comes, that Judah will be delivered and Israel will dwell in safety. Well, they were under Roman occupation, so they were like, he isn't delivering us from nothing. He's not, he's not conquering the Romans. He can't help us. That's not what this is saying delivered from this world safe from this world like we have been delivered and are safe this world cannot phase us even if it decapitates us we are safe we have been promised okay we have been promised this eternal life okay and that's what this is about and uh in 23 6 this is the name by which he will be known the lord of our righteousness and this is this is the uh, the Lord of our righteousness, Jeremiah twenty three, twenty six. Okay, go to your Strong's Concordance or go to your E Sword, Jeremiah twenty three, twenty six. Jeremiah twenty three six. Sorry, Jeremiah twenty three six. The Lord of our righteousness. Okay. And this is the Yahweh Tzedak, okay? Uh, the the, the, the self-existent, okay, righteous one, okay? And the Tzedak, Tzedak, this is Melchizedek, okay? Who is the king of righteousness, okay? Lord of lords, king of kings, okay? Melchizedek. And let's look, 28. John twenty John eight fifty two through fifty eight Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying he shall never taste of death. 
Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, whom makest thou thyself? Okay, look, fear not the first death, but the second death. Okay, Abraham is asleep. We need to know that. And Yeshua answers, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like you. But I know him and keep his saying, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And then the Jews said to him, Thou art your own, you're not even fifty years old. How have you seen Abraham? And Yeshua said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. And they got pissed. They wanted to stone him, okay? <laughs> now, Abraham saw his day? When did that happen, okay? Look at Hebrews 7, 1 through 4. Now this man, Melchizedek, the king of the, the righteousness, the king of peace, okay, king of Salem, of peace, shalom, peace, and priest of the most high God, met Abraham and blessed him when he was returning from defeating the kings. Abraham gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. In the first place, his name means king of righteousness. And then he is also the king of Salem, that is, the king of peace. He has no father, mother, or genealogy, no birth date recorded for him, nor a date of death. Like the Son of God, he continues to be a priest forever. Now, just now, just look at how great this man was. Even Abraham, the patriarch himself, gave him a tenth of what he had captured with joy. He was glad to see him and gave him a tenth. And we can go there. Genesis 14, 18-20. King Melchizedek of Shalom brought out bread and wine, and he, he was the, most, the priest of the Most High God, Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Abraham is blessed by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. Okay, And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your control. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. Okay, And if there are any more questions, Hebrews, the author of Hebrews 5, verse 5 through 10. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And he saith also another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in those days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in, in that he feared, though he were a son, Yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Young's literal translation, having been addressed by God a chief priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Okay? And we'll just go on. That's, that's that. All right, Jeremiah 23, verse 7. That's the mystery of Melchizedek. Jeremiah 23, 7. Therefore, the time is coming, declares the Lord, Yahweh, when people will no longer say, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought up the Israelis from the land of Egypt, but they'll say, As surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the Israelis from the land of the north and from all the lands where I had driven them and brought them into the land, then they'll live in their own land. Okay, so he says, therefore the time is coming. He's going to not just deliver them from the land of Egypt, which is which had happened, but now they're going to say he delivered them, okay, from the land of the north, but he had driven them and brought them into the land, and they'll live in their own land, okay? 1948, okay, Israel becomes a nation, all right? Jeremiah 23, 9. Concerning the prophets, my heart is broken within me, and all my bones shake. I am like a drunk man, like a person overcome with wine because of the Lord and because of his holy words. And Jeremiah is, is, is he's, he's broken for all the prophets. He's like, oh my God, all you prophets. Trembling. He just doesn't know what to think, like a drunk man, okay? Indeed, the land is full of adulterers. This is what the Lord was saying to him. Indeed, the land mourns because of the curse. The pastures of the wilderness have dried up. 
The adulterers' lifestyles are evil and they use their strength for what is not right. Look at these mega churches. Look at Joel Osteen. Okay? I'm calling him out. Okay? Watch that. Google that Joel Osteen, Larry King, when he says Yeshua isn't the only way. These are the false religions of the world. These are the false teachers who have led the church astray with false prophets and false prophecies. Okay, and it goes all the way down from the big. It goes from the biggest mega churches, all the way down to those individuals in their kitchens, teaching the word of God sideways, saying they're having visions and dreams and trying to change the word of God. Okay, this all goes back to one place, Jeremiah twenty three eleven. Indeed. Both priest and prophet are ungodly. Even in my house I find evil, declares the Lord. And he's talking about his house. Okay? First Kings six one, where's his house? Then Yeshua went into the temp then Yeshua went into the temple, threw out everyone who was selling and buying in the temple, and overturned the money changers tables and the chairs of those who sold doves, and he told them, It is written, My house is to be called a house of prayer, but you are turning it into a hideout for bandits. And twenty uh, Jeremiah twenty three twelve. I think also in Solomon, we uh, built the house of the Lord. Okay, the house of God. All right, the temple, God's temple, where the sanctuary will be defiled. Okay, and 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 where the 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 hatamid, the offering, will be will be annulled, alright? 23.12 Okay, yeah, here we go. 1 Kings 6.1 And it came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. Okay, Solomon's temple, the one Yeshua was re the one Yeshua had went into the rebuilt temple. Okay, so now we go to Jeremiah twenty three twelve. There is uh, talking to the prophets. Okay, and the false teachers, the shepherds. Therefore, their way will be slippery. They'll be driven out into the darkness where they'll fall, for I'll bring disaster on them. The year of their judgment, declares the Lord. Among the prophets of Samaria I saw a disgusting thing, for they prophesied by Baal and led my people Israel astray. Okay? And this Baal, you know who Baal is? Baal is a pagan god. Baal is a, 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 a fallen angel. Okay? If not Lucifer himself, okay? Jeremiah 2.2 2. Go and announce to Jerusalem, this is what Jehovah says. I remember the loyal devotion of your youth, your love as a bride. You followed me in the desert, in a land that was not planted. Israel was consecrated to the Lord. She was the first fruits of his produce. All who devoured her became guilty, and disaster came on them, declares Yahweh. Listen to this message from Yahweh, you descendants of Jacob, and all the families of the descendants of Israel. This is what Yahweh says. What did your ancestors find wrong with me that they left me and pursued worthless things, and so they became worthless? They didn't ask, where is Yahweh who brought us up from the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through the land of desert and pits, and through the land of dryness and deep darkness? in a land that people don't pass through where no one lives nobody can make it out of there Jeremiah 2 7 I brought you into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things but you came in defiled my land and made my inheritance into an abomination the priest didn't say where is Yahuwah and those handling the law didn't know me the rulers transgressed against me the prophets prophesied by Baal and they followed that which does not profit okay and this is Baal who is Baal Second Kings one two through three, and Ahazia and ah and Ahazia fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick, and he sent messengers and sent unto them, Go inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this sickness. But the angel of Yah said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it because there is no god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? 
Okay? So look. God's a jealous God. Okay? And, and, and the church has become a prostitute. Okay? For money. For power. For fame. For influence. For sexual power. Abominations beyond description. Okay? Jeremiah 23, 14. Among the prophets of Jerusalem, I saw a horrible thing, for they commit adultery and live a lie. They strengthen the hands of those who do evil, so that no one repents of his evil. All of them are like Sodom to me, and her residence like Gomorrah. I'm talking about Jerusalem. And Revelations 11, 7, and 8. And then they shall have finished their testimony. The beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them in reference to the two witnesses. And their dead bodies will lie in the streets of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified. Okay? Jerusalem. Jeremiah 23.15 And the, therefore this is what Yahuwah Elohim the God Yahuwah the Elohim of the heavenly army says about the prophets, I'm about to make them eat wormwood and drink poison water because godlessness has spread from the prophets of Jerusalem throughout the land. I'm about to make them eat wormwood. Okay? And that's in the, in the revelations. Okay? Wormwood and it made the water bitter. Okay? Jeremiah 8, 12-14 were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No, they were not. Not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, saith Yahuwah. I will surely consume them, saith Yahuwah. There shall be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade, and the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. There they will produce no fruit. Okay, if you judge them by their fruit, they are no producing no fruit. Why do we sit still? Assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defended cities, and let us be silent there. For Yehovah Elohim hath put us to silence, and given us water of gall, this wormwood, to drink bitter water, because we have sinned against the Lord. Okay? <laughs> Repent, you visionaries, you dreamers, changing the word of God. For Baal. Jeremiah 23.16 This is what the Lord of the heavenly army says. This is what Yehovah Shavuot says. Okay? Don't listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They're giving you false hopes. We're going to be raptured next week. Okay? How many people had false hopes during the high holy days? Because they had nothing better to do than to get everybody all jacked up. Okay? Crying wolf. All right? They declare visions from their own minds. They don't come from the Lord. Oh, the Lord showed me a vision of Rosh Hashanah rapture. Come on. Now what are they going to say next time? Been really quiet lately. There's a couple that keep going shameless, but most of them have been really quiet lately. Okay? They keep on saying to those who despise me, The Lord has said, You will have peace to all who stubbornly follow their own desires. They say, Disaster won't come upon you. Okay? Disaster won't come upon you. You're going to be saved from this. It, it's not the book that I read where it says that you'll be delivered up and you will be beaten and put in prison and some beheaded for His name's sake. That's the Bible I read. There's no escape clauses. And even if there is... We're not preparing for that. We are warriors. We are preparing for the worst, which is the greatest opportunity to be persecuted, to be beaten, to be imprisoned, to be put to death for our Lord and Savior who died for us. That's what this is about. Okay? And this whole thing about those who despise me, Jeremiah 23, 17... To scorn or by interchange to bloom to abhor to blaspheme okay to to blaspheme and they provoke the Lord okay but their behavior okay don't think because a lot of people think they love the Lord but they are blasphemous with their behavior and with the false teachings and 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 and, and following false gods 
Okay? It's a wicked world we live in. Wolves in sheep's clothing, okay? They don't look like the wolves they are, but they are. You have to recognize them. And how do you recognize them? If what they're saying is not in accordance with God's word. Okay? Chapter by chapter, line by line. Okay? To all who stubbornly follow known desires, they say, Disaster won't come upon you. Good, because I'm, I'm afraid. And I have things to do. But who has stood in the Lord's counsel to see and hear his message? Who has paid attention to his message and obeyed it? What is his message? We have been given his message, the word of God. Okay, 2319. Look, the storm of Jehovah's wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest, and it will swirl down around the head of the wicked. The Lord's anger, Yahweh's anger, won't turn back until he has accomplished what he intended to do. In the future, you will clearly understand it. I didn't send these prophets, but they ran anyway. I didn't speak to them, but they prophesied. Okay? And this ran anyway is like a reference to Elijah. In the hand of the Lord, 1 Kings 1846, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, he stood like a warrior, and he ran in the spirit before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Read that. He ran fast. Okay, but he was sent. And you know how he was sent? Because he, he, he tells him, he says... If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume that 50. And wham! And that's how you know he's a man of God. Okay? Not because he says so. Not because she says so. It's, 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 how, they, it's how they understand the word of God. And are they given the divine power to reinforce their prophetic nature. Their, their prophetic calling. Okay? Like the two witnesses will be. Okay, and in the end, when the Spirit is poured out, at the very end, like you will be. Okay, <laughs> Jeremiah twenty three twenty two. If they had stood in my counsel and delivered my words to my people, then they would have turned them back from their evil way, from their evil deeds. I mean, how many more ways do you need to say it? Do you need to be a prophet? Do you need to hear from God in, in order to use His Word to have people turn back from their evil ways? We have been given His Word. We have the words of the prophets. And this whole channel is about us turning from our evil ways. Turning from this evil world and attempting to walk in the narrow way. Struggle, however hard it may be. Putting away the sins of the flesh, putting away the life of the past that had us in chains and bondage to Satan on our way to hell. Okay? The Word of God is here for us. Okay? We can deliver His words to His people by reading the Word of God to people. Okay? Don't need to pretend. It's right here. His words, okay? His prophets, they convict us. All right? And you can't hide from God. Alright? 23.23 I'm a God who's near, declares Yahuwah, rather than a God who's far away. If a person hides himself in secret places, will I not see him? You think the Lord doesn't know when, you're, when you log on to the porn hub and you do your thing? You think he does not know? Okay? When you, when, when, when you sleep with somebody and you're having wild, drunken sex because it makes you feel good about who you are, you think he doesn't know? It hurts him. We're like, a, like, like his betrothed bride who he comes to marry and she has the smell of a man all over her, a strange man. And he knows... That she's been sleeping around and it hurts and it hurts and before you get angry you get hurt in that situation okay if a person hides himself in secret places will I not see him declares the Lord I feel the heavens and the earth do I not declared the Lord I've heard what the prophets who prophesy lies in my names have said I had a dream I had a dream the Lord gave me a vision I had a dream I need to share my dream with you I have dreams all the time and I know they're not from God when I have a lot of these dreams that are crazy dreams 
all right? The devil is coming at me, trying to have me sinning in my dreams, waking up. Oh, God, forgive me, because I dreamt it, okay? And then sometimes I have dreams that could be messages from God, but it's, it's between me and God. Okay, the fact that I'm not exactly sure, and I've shared a couple of them with you guys, because it was nothing harmless, you know, nothing that predicted anything, but just things that had me knowing that martial law is an in inevitability. It could be, could, could happen the way I saw it. That guillotines could be the way that Christians are killed in the end times, okay? But not when. I know when. In the sequence of events that was given to me through God's word. So every day, I prepare as if it was my last day because I can't control if I'm going to be there or not. I don't know if I'm going to see tomorrow. I need to be ready today. Okay? I had a dream. I had a dream. Let me post it on YouTube. 2326. How long will this go on? Is there anything in our... And if that dream is going... You know... Brother, brother Gotrax has some dreams. I like his dreams. They're consistent with the Bible. Okay, Micah's mommy, one, two, three, has dreams. And I check the scriptures, consistent with what the Bible says. Some of these people have dreams. They're just, they're just causing people to, to either worry about something they can't control or to think they're going to be safe from some destruction to come. And you will be safe. But some of us will be safe in order to go meet our death at the hands of Satan. So don't confuse the two. Okay? How long will this go on, 2326? Is there anything in the hearts of the prophets who prophesy lies, who prophesy from the deceit that is in their hearts, with their dreams that they relate to one another? They plan to make my people forget my name, just as their ancestors forgot my name by embracing Baal. Okay? And his name is truth. His name is righteousness. His name is the Word of God. Okay? And if you forget the Word of God, and you start running after these other ideas of a God that isn't speaking words according to His words, you're forgetting. Okay? You're forgetting. 2328. Let the prophet who has a dream relate the dream, but let whoever receives my message speak my message truthfully. What does straw have in common with wheat? declares the Lord. What does what does what does the, the kernel of wheat have in common with the chaff that surrounds it? That the wheat will be separated from the chaff, and the wheat will be collected, and the chaff will be burnt in fire eternally. That's what they have in common, is that they will be gathered, but after that they have nothing in common. Okay, the wheat will be saved. The chaff will be burnt into eternity. Okay? Jeremiah 23, 29. My message is like fire, or like a hammer that shatters rock, is it not? declares Jehovah. Therefore, look, I'm against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from each other. Oh, yeah, I just com received confirmation from Sister Such and Such, and Brother Hoosie who said this, and I'm confirmed because, you know, I I'm going to, I'm, you know, hey, did you see this video by so and so and such and such? Okay, check them out. Test them to Scripture. Okay? 2331, look, I'm against the prophets who use their tongues to issue a declaration. Thus saith the Lord, God told me, okay? Look, I'm against those who prophesy based on false dreams, okay? And I know I've had some false dreams, okay? Declares the Lord, and relate them and lead my people astray with their lies and their recklessness. Recklessness in that you just think every dream you have is given from the Lord. And because the devil has given you a dream and sister such and such the same dream and you think that's confirmation and you haven't checked it out in the word of God. The abomination which make a desolate standeth in the holy place is an eye beam signed by Barack Obama. Please. Rosh Hashanah rapture, please.
I don't send them. I didn't command them. And they provide no benefit to all these people. All these people who got all worked up. Who told all their family and friends. You're going to be a rapture in Rosh Hashanah. And you better be ready. Because if not, you're going to go to hell. And now all those people are like, what God do you follow? That don't make sense to me. When they should have been saying, every day could be the last day. Are you living right by God? You don't know if you have tomorrow. It's not promised you. People dying all around you. Instantaneous death. Spontaneous. Okay? Credibility. God's word is to give us credibility. And these dreams and visions that, that take away from that credibility are destructive. Okay? If you have a dream and you know it ain't from God, you better wake up and apologize. It's the devil's coming at you. Jeremiah 23, 33. Jeremiah, when these people or the prophet or a priest ask you, what is the oracle of the Lord? Say to them, you are the burden and I'll cast you out, declares the Lord. Now you need to know that this word oracle is the same word that they're translating as burden. So basically, when it says, what is the utterance of the Lord? Say to them, utterance of the Lord is I'll cast you out declares the Lord. And when his people or the prophet or priest shall ask you, what is the utterance of Jehovah? And you shall say to them, the utterance, he, he will forsake you, is the utterance, says Jehovah. 23.34 As for the prophet, the priest, or the people who I say, I have an oracle, I have an utterance of the Lord, I'll judge that person and his household. Okay? This is what you should say to one another and amongst yourself. What has the Lord answered? Or what has the Lord said? Okay, not a prophetic utterance. But is the Lord saying this? Thus saith the Lord in the Bible? You know, or has the Lord answered your prayers? Okay. But you are to no longer mention the utterance of the Lord because the utterance is only for the person to whom the Lord gives his message and, and you have overturned the words of the living God and the Lord of the heavenly armies, our God. This is what you should say to the prophet. What has the Lord answered or what has the Lord said? Okay, thus saith the Lord. Okay, here's this Bible and you want to go creating new ideas. Alright? Not you, but you know what I'm saying. Jeremiah 23, 38. Since you're saying, we have an utterance of the Lord, therefore this is what the Lord says. He will answer your message with this message. Utterance of the Lord, I'll send you away with these words. Don't say utterance of the Lord. Don't say I received a vision from the Lord. Therefore I'll surely forget you and cast you in the city I gave you and your ancestors out of my presence. And he's saying, he will forget you and he will take your city and cast it away. Alright? And your ancestors. And what? Revelations 21, 1-4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. That means the first, the first New York City and is gone. That means the first Jerusalem is gone. Okay? And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And that bride, and you are a temple. You are a pillar in that temple. And the bride comes down in New Jerusalem is the people the people of God coming down and I heard a great voice of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and he will be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall be there be any more pain for the former things have passed away okay Jeremiah 23, 40, in closing, And I'll bring you everlasting reproach and everlasting humiliation that won't ever be forgotten to these false prophets, these dreamers that have gone by bow seeking gain, okay, whether it be through flattered, being flattered or financial gain. Oh, look how many views I'm getting because I, I'm saying the end is tomorrow. Look how much money I'm getting because I'm telling everybody, it's cool, just give me money and you'll have peace. Prosperity. You'll be safe. I want to close with Matthew. Chapter 25, 31-46. And when the Son of Man shall come in His glory, 
and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats, the wheat from the chaff, the wheat from the stalk. And he shall set his sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. And then he shall say, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and tear at the kingdom I prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, Lord, when we saw thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it to one of the least of my brethren, ye have done it to me. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels I bring on you everlasting reproach and everlasting humiliation that won't ever be forgotten okay prepared for the devil and his angels look at Jude okay look at Jude How terrible it be for them, for they lived like Cain, rushed headlong into Balaam's error to make a prophet, and destroyed themselves in Korah's rebellion. Okay? They are wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their own shame. They are wandering stars for whom the deepest darkness has been reserved forever. Okay? For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. Spare some change? Can you help me out? I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. Hand them a bottle of water. You don't have to think, oh, they're going to get drunk. Just give out bottles of water. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. It's winter time. Let's give some clothes to the shelters to hand out. Okay? Sick and in prison and you have not visited me. You know somebody in the hospital? Check them out. Okay? Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered, or thirst, or a stranger naked, sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? You know, I got a buddy. I got a brother. He was a bad man. Diagnosed to cancer to die. Chose the Lord instead. Was going to die in a month, they said. They said he was miraculously cured, and he, and he now gives his life to the Kairos ministry that goes into the prisons, and he goes to the murderers and the rapists. And he preaches the message of love and salvation. And he tells me he has these big killers on their knees crying. That's power. Okay. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness unto life eternal. That's my message for today. I love you guys. And I pray for all of you for the strength and the courage. And the wisdom to know which 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 is God's word and which is just dreamers and defilers and, and idolaters and, and an abomination to God. Speaking from their own hearts and their lust for their own desires. And we pray for this courage and wisdom. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and the Ruach HaKadosh. Amen. Peace.